G'day, g'day. Hope you guys are all having a good one. And today, I'm, I don't really know how I wanted to start these tutorials. So I decided, why not do something unique, but something that, you know, you can accust get accustomed to the software with, you know? Um, something, it's pretty simple, as you can see. There's only a few nodes I've broken them up commented them out um for anybody interested about commenting i didn't bring it up in my tutorial um but you can just click this so just right clicking here after dragging and selecting and it can um you know just drag select whatever you want you can do multiple um and then just right clicking here create comment yada yada naming you can also see the colors um that's just a side thing that i forgot to mention um, there's a couple other things around this, like, you know, you can arrange a line, so forth. Anyway, I decided that this is a bit unique. I hadn't really tried anything. Eh, I did things similar, but this was still a bit weird. So, hey, hope it's helpful, and I plan to do some more terrains in a future point, but um, for now, I'm just pretty busy with work. So, some basic, easy stuff for now. Anyway let's get started first off you start with your base terrain what we're going to do is just so we can we don't need the warp noise we don't need any of these right let's just stick with the base now for this let's turn down the scale so this will just get rid of all the mounds or anything like that you can turn down the amplitude which will make it nice and pretty smooth we still have a couple bumps and we can get rid of this by going like that now these bumps here can change what the graph looks like so just sitting this here we'll completely just remove it all next up let's start adding some you know cuts into the terrain first thing to note you can do similar things with a splatter node now if i just plug this in remove that let's look over here now you can get it a similar result as to what I'm going to show you but if we just remove the rotation range the scale range let's remove the height range and the position randomization as you can see here we've got pretty normalized height map and you know we can change the shape remapper we can change the grid size as well I just found that with a bit of experimentation it, you couldn't really get uh, anything entirely like this so slightly unfortunate but that's just kind of a limitation at the moment i am hoping that within time with this next method i'm going to show you you can also you can do some sort of array stuff if anybody's used blender um you have an array modifier which positions things at similar results in i guess the same distance in between so setting us you know a preferred distance for example and then you know having these instead of having to have a multiple that you just keep duplicating it seems a little bit tedious and there's better ways of doing it but regardless for now this works so maybe you want to go off and do your own thing from here on and create your own stuff you've got different uh looks that we can do here so you know maybe one of these works here we've got some nice like roofing um cool crescents so forth um, but no, that's not what we're going to do for this tutorial. Here we're going to go and grab a faulting um, node. Now, this faulting node is kind of... It's an interesting start. It's not particularly usable for us anyway. Um, so at this point, what we're going to do is in this profile, this changes the, I guess, what it looks like, right? So you can play around with it, do some cool, like, faulting designs that you want to do if this suits your needs but for this what we're going to do is just select this v what this does is just creates a fault now here we can change the the width over here and stuff like that but for now this is fine and all we need now what we're going to do is remove all these position randomization we don't need that as well as removing this um, rotation randomizer here this will just give us a nice cut that's what I like to use. Now, next, what we're going to do is just position it. I'm just going to do it pretty rough. It doesn't matter. You guys can make it perfect if you wish. But um, for the sake of this tutorial, it's not too important. You can play around with the width. Get it to whatever you like. I currently have mine set to 19. If you want it, you know, wider or not so wide, you can change that yourself. 
Also, with that, you can also add bevels if you wish. Stuff like this. You can start beveling these corners here if that's also what you're after, but not for me anyway. Now, once we have done that... Ah, back to that array talk, by the way. Um, you can duplicate, you can have multiple, but I never find it's, it's too um, randomized. So for these sorts of uh, weird kind of breaking the whole, I guess, workflow of what GeoGen is meant to be, um, is not as usable. Regardless, let's just control C and control V that. This will get this again. In the output, we can input the base height map. Once again, just select this output node here. Uh, if, you, if you'd rather just drag it into here, you can drag it into there and just view it over here. But I find it a little bit easier to just to see it with this. Now, next, what we want to do is have another one intersect that. So we're going to rotate it. And we can rotate it by 90 degrees. Now, it's going to be a little bit offset. Um, but we can just move that. So grab the position. Um, let's play around with the position. Here we go. That's about centered for me. Pretty happy with that. It's not perfect. I might move that actually. There we go. Eh, it's still not perfect, but you know, I'm just going by. I'm not doing any mathematics to figure out what's perfect. Okay, so from here we've got our basic tiles. Maybe this is all you want to know, and this is completely usable for you. But next. If you want to continue following along with the tutorial and figure out how to color things individually. Now, there is no perfect way of doing this, but I found a method. Um, so, yeah, I will go through that. So, first off, we're going to grab a color node. Here we go. Colorize node. And you can either set this to black or white. I'm going to set it to black, just so it's a little bit easy to see. But it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Now this is going to be our base color, okay? So anything that I guess isn't, but you know, is not. Um, if you have mask, if you mask anything out in the future, it would be black. Next up, we're going to grab another colorized node, and we're going to turn this one white. Just going to drag that into the color um, input. We're going to start with a mask. Now, here we're going to use something interesting called mask propagation. I do believe they might change this later on, or maybe it's got a different name now. I do believe when reading it, there was something... I do recall maybe mask shadow. No, not mask shadow. I do recall reading something um, in the notes of one point. Oh, 0 0.13 that they were changing this node or something or the name or whatever um that doesn't seem to be the case any at the moment so at the moment mask propagation um this is what the icon looks like maybe it's different in the future now with this mask propagation what we're going to use is this forbidden mask but before doing that we're going to go and input the height map so it's actually usable ah here we go this is an example of the black and then the white as this is currently only using the top. Now, propagation, uh, to me, I think is most useful for getting the tops of things. Now, I'm not sure if that's necessarily its exact purpose, and I'm not too sure if that's, like, the uh, that might be the exact, you know, what its exact purpose is, but that's what I find works the best. So, you know, you can play around with the, um, all of these chance of growth. Now, this isn't going to do too much, as it's a very basic... Um, I guess design at the moment but when doing more complex terrains it does make a little bit of a difference but here what we're going to be doing is adding a forbidden mask now we're going to be doing something that you know arguably is a little bit weird but it's the best and only way of i guess achieving this and i hope that in future cases there might be better masks for this um at you know the recording of this video from my testing um before recording this i couldn't find anything else that really worked just as well so what we're going to be using is a mask shape and here we're going to be using a crest um as a shape 
And here, I think you can sort of see where I'm coming along with this. Now, what we want to be doing is setting the width remap from Bezier, as you can see. We control and click the other um, point, right click, and then in interpolation mode, set it to constant. What we're going to do is we're going to grab this, set it in the middle, grab this one, set it in the middle as well. And as you can see, what we're doing here now is getting a bit of a basis for how we want the mask to, I guess, mask each tile. Now, unfortunately, we have to do this manually, but that's unfortunately a limitation of the program. I do hope in future cases they might change it, but uh, it might make some special things for this. But I, at the moment, I don't believe this is really the goal. So right now we have one thing must. And if we close that, ta-da. Now we've got one white tile. Next up, what we're going to be doing is adding a blend mask in mask modifiers. Input this into footer and mask. And we're going to add a background. We're actually going to duplicate this. So control C, control V. We can align these if we want. Uh, auto arrange, I should say. Input that. So what I'm going to be doing next is changing the position and rotation of this to get into the next corner. Now, the unfortunate case is this is kind of yeah, it's a bit of a ramp at the moment. So what we're going to do to remove this is just set this to be the desired um, mask here, just so we can see this as we move it. So when we move it here, as you can see, it all moves. And if we move the position over here, you're going to see that it's going to be covering up both things. Now, it doesn't matter how long I want to move this, it's always just going to keep going. Now, that's a limitation of the software at its current stage, but hopefully that gets changed later. To get around this, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it. I believe that will be perfect. And then getting moving it down here, we'll get the next area. Now, as you can see, I've kind of missed it a little bit here, so I might just move the position a little bit just to make sure it's correctly taking up the whole tile. Now, once I move this forbidden back into background and then the blend into the forbidden, as you're going to see, no change at the moment. But what we're going to do is change it from alpha to max. And there we go. Now we've got both. From here, you've pretty much finished exactly, you know, the um, desired result. But we're just going to do one last final thing. What we're going to do is get another colorize node. So what I'm going to be doing there... So from here, what we're going to do is get another colorize node, and we're just going to go right click, color, colorize once again. Put the output into base color, output into color, and from here, I'm going to set this to be gray, and this is going to be in the um, gaps. So from here, we're just going to set a, we're going to go grab output, mask, mask height, and here we're going to set that um, in there, and this is going to, we're going to try and get this into these crevasses here. So for this, when we move the in range, oops, when we move the in range, we're not going to see really any result that we're after. Now the issue is that for height, it's currently trying to calculate the top, the tips of it all. And that's not what we're after. So, very simple fix. Just setting this from an angle going upwards, setting it to an angle going downwards, like that. Awesome. Now we have it in the crevasses, and that should be it. There we go. So you can play around with it, make sure it's exactly where, where you're after, but um, it's pretty much fine where it is now. Um, overall, I find it's not perfect, but it often does the job well enough. Um, if I set this to 110, maybe we can get this a bit closer. Oops, not 100, 110. And here we go. This is probably the best result you're going to be getting. Um, it's not perfect. There is a bit of a black ring. I think playing around with some of these masks will give you a better result there. Um, but that could simply just be 
the nature of the program's limitations as we are sort of not doing what the program's i guess made for um obviously at least now everything is um you know perfectly changeable if we don't like how wide these faults are oopsies um you can obviously just get rid of uh we can change the profile with this um i forgot that i added that bevel there um so this is changing this one you can change the that there um you can always change the width of course if you want it wider or not um but overall yeah uh i think the amplitude also, or amplitude can give you a similar result there but not as desirable interesting regardless um overall yeah uh, i hope this is helpful informative um this isn't exactly perfect i think changing some of these might give you a slightly cleaner result but um yeah hopefully this was interesting regardless i was a bit lost on what to do and i don't have too much time to go about making some ultra high detailed terrain today so hopefully later this week i can go over how to make some uh terrains and some planets but for now this will give you a great start into how to at least make materials and give you a bit of um I guess an idea of how the program works how you can utilize some of these nodes for some uh unique results as you know anybody can go through and look at for example let's go to the home and we can all go through these um terrains here and you know they all look cool they're nice and you know going through and re, re i guess just looking and replicating what's already here is going to give you a nice result so so, you know for some of mine i want to be going and doing some unique stuff that you wouldn't generally see is it's you know there's a lot that you can do with these software but not necessarily should you always you know just use it for its basic things sometimes it's got some cool interesting stuff that you wouldn't know that you could make in here so hopefully this was informative um once again uh by you know learning this you can find some interesting other results as I've shown in the base tutorial um, here if I open up for example sidewalk bumps by using this same idea I was able to create these it's a pretty simple thing but as you can see even some of these very simple basic uh, I guess ideas and, and theories and so forth um, can create some pretty cool looking designs so yeah hopefully it's helpful and hopefully it's you know influenced you into making something a bit unique not just you know terrains and planets but hopefully if not um you know you're a bit more accustomed with the software and yeah overall thank you all for watching and hope you have a good one catch you later bye bye